I've got a six inch knife here too. Here's a six inch knife. Well, I'm gonna start out with the three inch knife. If you feel comfortable only using a three inch or four inch knife, try, the, try that first until you get a little bit better. And then try a six inch knife. Some people out there, you know, who are professionals, they'll laugh and say, why are you using a three inch knife? It's taking you forever. Well, yeah, it takes a little bit longer, but you'll get the idea. It'll give you practice on knowing how to put it up there, how much mud to put on your knife, and all that, okay? And as I'm putting it on, I take some and I kind of wipe off the corners so that it doesn't want to spooge out over the edge when I put it on and get all over on the floor, okay? Like just keep wiping off the excess when I need to, right on the edge of my pan, pick up some more, put it up there, grab some more, wipe off the tips like that. Can reach out this way. You know, you're gonna get to a point where you don't want to move the ladder any more than you have to. Okay, so just start practicing how to put this stuff up. Make sure you get the tape all the way around on the edges. The main thing is, when, once you put it on, the great thing about that webbing tape is you're actually pushing the mud all the way into the sheetrock, okay? Obviously you know that, I think. That's why it's a webbing tape. That mud is going through the little holes and bonding right on the sheetrock, okay? And no matter how much I get on there, there's all, you're going to see some of the tape peeking through. Don't worry about it. You know, some of it's going to be because you press too hard to get it off. Other times, you're just going to have to put it on the best you can. And you're going to have to, once you put more mud on, you're going to cover up more. See, this is just the first coat of this. We're going to put more on. Oops. You see that? I had one little bit that already fell down on the floor. That's okay. That's why I got plastic down there. And even though I'm going to put another coat on here, you still want to get this up so you don't have too many high ridges on it. Because the more, the more buildup you have down here, the wider the patch you're going to have to make later, or else you're going to see a bulge in your ceiling. But you've got to have enough mud on there to cover the tape, <laughs> you know? I'll talk to you more you know, about how wide we got to make this patch and the reasons why later. For the time being though, you just keep following this, you know, one step at a time, right? Hey, how do you eat an elephant? <laughs> one bite at a time. Same thing with the patch. There's a few steps you got to do. Okay, your first step, you might think, oh, that looks awful. 
You might think, I'm a professional doing this? I never said I was a professional sheetrocker, did I? I don't do this every day. Okay? But when I get done, my patches look just as good as a sheetrocker. Well, maybe not 100% as good for somebody who does it every single day. But good enough. Okay? And you just, the more patches you do, the better you get. When I first started doing this, I was kind of afraid, like, oh, I can't do that. I better call somebody and pay somebody else. But after a while, I thought, you know, I think I can do this. Just that little bit that I mixed up almost got me, well, it got me half, halfway through. Okay, now I can use that to hit the screws up here. You don't want to leave big edges like that. You know, just wipe them off. to the end, have to mix up some more, hope you're learning something, I think you are, I'll be right back. I'm going to use my six inch knife and see how that goes. A little bit bigger than the other one. So you can put you can put a little bit more material on there in one go. And you might think, man, why didn't I try that at first? Well, it's a trial and error, know your limitations, and if you're, Phil, you're better than the average Joe, you know, you can try the six inch right at first if you want. Okay, I still want to wipe off the, the edges like that, and you'll see why after you start going. And you'll probably be like, oh, I wondered. I wondered why a sheetrocker always did that, you know, when they're doing work with hand tools. Now I know why. Let's see if I can do this without moving my ladder. I always want to, I always just keep situating this mud in my pan. I got too much in one edge, I can, I can flop it over, take a nice little grab in the middle, wipe those edges off, and put it up there. See, if I didn't wipe those edges off, it would pooch out on the ends and fall down on me, or get on the ladder, get all on the floor. The more stuff you got on the floor, the more chances you have of walking in it, you know? Wipe that off. Backhand it. You know? I don't want to move my ladder every little second, do I? Okay. And I might have thought, wow, I should have done that with the 3 inch too. Instead of using the 3 inch, that went quicker, way quicker. Well, you're just going to have to try it and see what works best for you. Now, when you're doing this, sometimes I've seen people just do that and leave it, thinking, oh, that's fine. You got too much, there's too much of a bump there. So, my next coat, I'm going to have to make that bigger. I don't want to make it bigger. So, I'm just going to. You know, your first pass, you can put it on like that. 
you know, and then wipe off the excess. Sometimes you might have to look at look at it when you wipe it off. It sometimes wants to drag off the, the nail or the screw head. So just be aware of that. If you got to, you can put on a little bit more. You know, check it out. Now I got some more mud in here, and there's not much more I can do with this patch. You can only work it so much and then leave it. Okay? I've got all the seams done. I'm going to let this dry a little bit and show you what I do next. So what am I going to do with the rest of this mud? I just got to throw this away? Yeah. Just got to throw it away. A little breezy out here today. Little breezy. Feels good though. Okay. You're just going to Put this over here, clean it out like that. Put it there, go like that, throw it there. And that, that I just can't use. Usually, no matter how much you mix up, you're never gonna get it perfect. Okay, and if you think, why is he using that cheapo plastic sheetrock pan, drywall pan? Hey, I wanted to show you, if that's all the money you got, you can do it with one of these. Okay, the stainless steel ones are the best ones to get. So if you're going to do, if you're going to start doing some sheetrock work, then I would suggest you getting a stainless steel pan. Okay? You're only going to do this once in a while. It's alright. Get the plastic one, work with it, then decide later if you really want to get the stainless steel one. Now, I'm not going to get every single little bit in there, but I'm going to get it enough to where I don't have any loose bits in there. Okay, because I need to mix up some more. I got another patch to do on the ceiling, as you know. Alright, so I'm going to mix up my next batch for that next patch. Okay, 